Hello friends and a very warm welcome to all of you. I'm Dr. Mukmohit Singh and today we are going to talk on a very frequently asked doubt to me. Many students ask doubt on the same question again and again and that's the reason I've uh, just uh, tried to explain myself more lucidly so that you all can understand easily. I'll take just a few minutes to discuss what is the difference between CB, NAT and LPA that is line probe essay. Both of these are molecular diagnostic tools which are used in detection or diagnosis of tuberculosis under the National Tuberculosis Elimination Program, NTEP. It was earlier known as RNTCP. CBNAT is what cartridge-based cartridge based nucleic acid amplification test. What is the use of CBNAT? The use of CBNAT is two things. It helps us in detecting the DNA sequence which is specific to the mycobacterium tuberculosis complex. It also helps us in identifying any rifampicin resistance which it may have occurred in that particular mycobacterium tuberculosis. The gene which is responsible for rifampicin resistance, you should remember it's, it could be an important MCQ, is this is RPOB gene. So what is the basic uh, process by which CBNAT identifies uh, the molecular diagnosis or DNA sequence of the mycobacterium tuberculosis? It's fairly simple. So what it does is, is it first of all isolates the genomic material from the sample. This genomic bacteria, uh, material from the sample uh, is, is isolated by sonication and amplification. So it is sonication followed by amplification of the genomic sequence or the genomic material. This amplification of the genomic DNA is done using what I think you all know it. It is done using PCR polymerase chain reaction and therefore it is known as a nucleic acid amplification test. It is a NAT test. So the, the, the good thing about this is that it can do all this identification on the mycobacterium tuberculosis sample in a very fast time that is in 90 minutes. This could be a frequently asked question to you as well in your exam that CBNAT can test or diagnose tuberculosis within 90 minutes. The second advantage, uh, the second way by which uh, the CBNAT works is using something called as molecular beacons. So molecular beacons are used which are like uh, the RPOB gene that is the resistance uh, for uh, rifampicin gene. So in real time they can find out if this RPOB gene is present or not. So primarily the use of CBNAT is in telling about the about the rifampicin resistance and the presence of the bacteria or the bacilli. So now after learning about uh, the CBNAT, let us have a look, a quick look at the LPA. LPA is line probe assay. First MCQ, what is the uh, objective of line probe assay? It is the same. It also detects the DNA sequences from the mycobacterium tuberculosis complex and any mutation and any mutation which may be associated with the mycobacterium tuberculosis complex. So what is the process of LPA? It's fairly simple and straightforward. First of all, as usual, we will take the sputum samples. They are decontaminated and then we do smear microscopy smear microscopy the smear microscopy will give us two results either the sample would be smear positive or the sample could be smear negative if the sample is smear positive that means the tuberculosis bacilli was detected so now the dna is extracted and it is subjected to pcr PCR is polymerase chain reaction. So now you understand that in CBNAT also we were using PCR and in LP also we are using PCR that is polymerase chain reaction. All the smear negative samples, they are inoculated, inoculated in liquid culture media and LPA is performed using the culture isolate obtained in case there is growth of the mycobacteria. So 
all the material, whatever DNA is extracted from the PCR, this DNA is now the PCR amplified products, that is what is you will get, are reverse hybridized on nitrocellulose strips. So there are something called as nitrocellular nitrocellulose strips. On these strips, there are probes, DNA probes, which are specific. It has DNA probes, which is specific for mycobacterium tuberculosis and the mutations. So these probes, they will act as the attachment sites for the mycobacterium and the drug resistance genes in case there are. So there are two types of uh, first uh, line probe assay. The line probe assay can be of two types. We can have the first line line probe assay or we can do the second line line probe assay. The first line line probe assay can identify it will have probes which are specific to the resistance to rifampicin and isoniazid. So rifampicin and isoniazid resistance is specific rifampicin we already talked that is the rtob gene and the isoniazid i think you all know it's the cat g or the cag gene right or the inh a gene these two mutations cause isoniazid resistance the second line lpa it is specific for any fluoroquinolone resistance and any second line injectable resistance Fluoroquinolone resistance is, may happen due to some specific genes. These are known as GYRA and GYRB genes. So if these two genes are there, they, this could lead to fluoroquinolone class resistance or there could be second line injectable drug class resistance. So these are the two types you have seen right now, CBNAT and LPA. These both are molecular diagnostic mechanisms or, uh, or techniques that we use for detection of mycobacterium tuberculosis in the pulmonary TB suspects or the presumptive pulmonary TB cases. So with that, I'd like to thank you so much for listening to me and uh, all the very best.